As I'm known to overcomplicate things, I thought this time I'd try something simple and straightforward. Just rudder and elevator, and these round designs come in various names. This one is called the nutball, so the rudder will go at the back there. We have the elevator marked out. No ailerons, this line will be cut and then the wing tips will be raised up. The line here I've put indicating the starting point for the C of G and underneath there will be a reinforcing rib. This rather neat motor mount I've taken from Thingiverse as always links to everything down in the description and that fits this 2204-2300 kV motor. Not sure whether it'll be running 2 or 3S. The objective is to keep it simple for a change. Let's see how we get on. The main body has been done there and covered with packing tape which gives it strength. Underneath I just used a barbecue skewer to do two functions. One was to put it in the gap there to get the correct angle here and obviously that's going to provide some strength, rigidity, whatever, which it's going to need no doubt. Elevator you can see there and clearly the rudder, so that's all our control surfaces. Put this rib along the bottom again for additional strength and to support the motor mount. I bent up some old school landing gear, soldered that together, little four channel Matek receiver and this one I've modified with a couple of resistors just to be able to give me the battery voltage. 3.7 gram servos will suffice. Not sure what battery we're going to use at the moment. I have this 2S1000 milliampere hour pack. At the moment the airframe and the components come in at just about 140 grams and with the addition of this battery, that takes it to around 200. So we're out of the grasp of the fun police. Motor clearly will sit on the front there. First thing I'm going to do is to put the motor and landing gear on and then try and place the components to get the C of G more or less correct. I can still just make out the lines that I've put under the tape there to get my C of G at least at the starting point. I'll go ahead and do those things now and uh, we'll come back. Pretty much complete now. Got the landing gear securely fixed there. In the end I've decided to go for this 1100 3S pack and this is a high volt pack, the GNB brand, and almost unbelievably it's only two grams heavier than this guy. Part of that may be due to the fact that this has an XT60 and now we're on XT30. There's my voltage sense wire going down to the little receiver there. I've positioned the two servos, as you can see at the back there, to get the C of G more or less right. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to put things yet, but it's all working at the moment. Underneath you can see the little plate. It's actually just foam. I've put in there to help support the landing gear. The back here, just a simple skid made out of a tie wrap, which just pushed into the foam there and glued into place. All very simple. Using my transmitter of choice these days, the great Radio Master Pocket. Yeah, Seems to be a quirk of this Matek receiver that uh, things tend to go to extremes before the receiver is bound to the transmitter. There we can see we've got lots of throw on the rudder. Not so much, but I've put uh, rates on both the rudder and the elevator, such that with the rudder, sorry, with the elevator, I can go all the way up until it almost just hits the rudder there. So that should be, give us plenty of uh, Movement, of course, a throttle interlock. Throttle active. So that should have plenty of oomph. Throttle cut, 12.7 volts. On the momentary switch here, I have the battery voltage. 12.7 volts. And you may think that 12.7 volts is quite high, but once again, this is a high volt pack. 
I actually tested this on my load tester at 4 amps and it gave 770 milliampere hours. So I'm quite happy with that. I've had good luck with these in the past. There we have it for the moment then. I may try and jazz it up a bit with some other graphics. We'll wait and see. Well, here we are then. My inspiration was drawn from the somewhat wacky shape of the wings here. And I just thought, why not uh, wacky races? So we have uh, Dick Dastardly and Muttley resplendent in their flying rocket propelled car there. And not, of course, forgetting Catch the Pigeon. Uh, that's as far as my madness has taken me so far. The next thing will be to see if it actually flies. The latest creation. Oh, I like it. <laughs> It'll never catch the pigeon. So no wind to speak of for our little nutball. It's completely dead. So whichever way we choose to go. Bottle active. Launch mode. Well, she's away. Find it. <laughs> she's very manoeuvrable. Well, consider it's only rudder and elevator. It's doing very well. Flight, Greg. Yes. It's a lot of fun. I think I'm going to have to tame down the uh, control throws significantly. used to it it'll be uh, successful as I say just for rudder and elevator it's an awful lot of fun which is as I always say what it's about very little power to fly. It's only half throttle there. Well, there we are. Very, very maneuverable, as all nutballs are supposed to be. Hey. <laughs> well, there she is then, uh, a successful flight then of the 
Nutball Wacky Races incarnation. Many thanks for watching.